the, uh, as the, the credits rolled up, you saw Blank of the Dead Productions. That's because we didn't know what the name of this movie was going to be up until around a month ago. When I went, uh, I was lucky enough to go on set and the clapper boards just said, question mark, of the dead. I would like to bring back to the stage, George A. Romero! Directed a western. You finally directed a western. Why did you choose? Why did you? Why did you choose to go this this route with uh, with the story? I mean, it's, it's interesting that it's kind of uh, Diary of the Dead kind of put a string out for this character. Can you just talk about how you decided to go this way with Reeve? Well, the western thing came a little later. Um, uh, we, we, some of it had to do with style. Some of it had to do with, I just sort of like the juxtaposition. I mean, traditionally, Westerns are about the individual. And zombie films, at least mine, are more about revolution or failed revolution. It's you know, nothing to do with the individual at all. And I just thought that was a neat contrast. And then I love, there's an old movie called uh, The Big Country, which I, I love. And so that sort of became a, a model of the production designer and Adam, the DP, Mark, the designer, Alex uh, Kavanaugh, the wardrobe. And we all watched the big country, and that became our model. And that, uh, um, you know, which, some of that was just fun. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you leave a guy alone, you know? <laughs> Can you talk about so the, the, the story, how, um, I mean, it's, it is kind of a sequel to Diary. I mean, just using well, one of the minor characters from, from yeah, Diary. Yeah, well, Alan is, is, you know, and we sort of cheated. <laughs> the guys in the background were not the same guys, but uh, uh, if you, you, you know, you don't really see it coming. There's a guy that looks a little bit like Cisco. There's a guy that looks a little bit like Eric. I think we can get away with it. So we're just going to ask uh, on the um, what do you bring to the role of Crockett? I mean, and how was it for you where you had a small role in Diary and then suddenly you got a call, it's like, hey, we want you to be the lead in the next one? I don't know, I mean, I, because I knew George for a bit and, and uh, I was sort of you know, called upon to do these sort of National Guard parts for the prior couple movies and then uh, I was, you know, off to something else and I heard about the script and then it, Mentioned, you know, you might be doing a little bit more than just a couple of scenes in the show, and, and it, but it was great because I don't know, I only, I only really felt like I was sort of playing, a, you know, it was like Clint Eastwood. I just, I didn't really have to do anything. I just kind of had a grimace and you know, kind of remember a bit, I guess, and smash my cigarettes. I don't know. And every single time I did a take, I'd be like, "Suck that's good, great, <laughs> awesome." Let's move on! <laughs> I guess the whole movie's gonna be like that. And it was, but no, it was just what really you said. Were you, are you a horror film fan? Were you uh, well aware of who George A. Romero was? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he's the king of the genre and he pretty much invented uh, the whole thing. So, uh, And also I worked with him on land. I had a, a small role on that. For like five seconds? Yeah, I caught the shotgun. That's about it. And then, um, and yeah, so, so I knew him from that, and uh, big fan of movies, and, and he's, uh, he's, you know, you know he, what he does is, is always going to be uh, something special, and something that uh, will be part of the zombie history, and uh, so yeah, it was great to even have the audition, and, and then get the role, it was just uh, ecstatic, so. And he's such a good sharpshooter. Yeah, yeah, I'm a good shooter. <laughs> Just pass the down. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was great. I, I was a big fan of George's before meeting him and working with him. And I'm, yeah, I was, and still I'm just so glad that he like me let, let me do this. Um, it, yeah, it was a blast. We shot near my hometown, Hamilton, which was um, really fun. Um, and um, I mean, yeah, we saw it. It was it, it was fun and. Um, everything's great. George is, is amazing to work with. He's pretty, um, pretty hands-off. Like, it, it, I remember there's a couple times I was like, I hope this is 
my one because he just keeps moving on. And, but it was, it was all really great. Um, great class. Athena is here as well, who is so amazing as well. She's like, she's like, uh, yeah, and just like, amazing. It's great class, so much fun to ride horses and shoot guns. Oh, that was the big thing. They were, everybody was making fun of the Mardul, right? Pussy uh, foot. Uh, no, I mean, it was, uh, it's like uh, the boyhood fantasy come true, George, you know? I mean, Gave me a gold-plated Winchester lever ration gun, and I get to shoot things. I mean, I did things. No, not did things. And uh, no, it was uh, it was a blast. Um, and uh, you know, Kenny and I, we, we go way back uh, as old friends. We actually did our first feature film together, George, and back in the '70s. And uh, I'm sorry he's not here. Actually, yeah, these guys deserve Purple Hearts. Uh, it was, the conditions were hideous, the weather was terrible, and it, it was freezing all the time, and it was, it was largely uh, outdoors at night. Terrible, huh? It was always raining. Always raining, snowing, it snowed. I mean, it was just terrible. <laughs> yeah. And then thawed. It was uh, really rough conditions. That, it, I, I, we, I always look first for that theme, what's it about? And this is not, you know, it's not, some of the films have been very specific. Dawn of the Dead was consumerism, you know, I mean, they, they were a bit more obvious, I think. This is more general, it's really about war, you know, it could be Northern Ireland, could be Iraq, uh, you know, and, and, uh, uh, the people can't forget tribalism, of, of, and it's about tribalism, really. People can't forget that uh, they're enemies, and, you know, or they label them as enemies. Yeah, even faced with uh, an extraordinary uh, changing world, in this case, uh, huge uh, species eradicating uh, event, they're still shooting at each other. So, there's always been a disappointment. <laughs> so, that's what this is about. Huh? Zombies in space? I don't know. I, maybe I could go through all the genres, right? I could just. I don't know, make a gangster or something. Zombies <laughs> <laughs> can't run, they cannot run. <laughs> well, that's pretty interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't, again, I didn't, I don't, I never got that sense uh, when we were making this film. But, you know, it's funny now that you mention it. I mean, there are certain visual similarities. But uh, that, that would be the only connection. The moment you said that, I just thought back. Was, uh, I, that was another film where the colors weren't muted. It was in your face, sort of, uh, you know, Hollywood looking in color. And that, so when you first mentioned Night Riders, that's the only thing that came to mind. You just have to make, you have to make some film, then. <laughs> I, you know, that sounds, that sounds ridiculously simple, but it's the truth. You can't walk in and tell somebody, I know how to make a movie. You have to be able to show it. So somehow, you know, get a camera somehow and do something. Uh, that's really my best advice, and you can do that today. There's a zombie film that was just made in, in London for what, 45 pounds or something? <laughs> <laughs> Except that one's called Colin. It's a zombie film called Colin. Maybe a little bit of a conflict of interest to show that one. I'd like to thank you very much, George, for having me back.